Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy holidays. Hope everybody is doing well. Thank you for being here today. I am really excited that you're here. We've got a lot of information to share, and we're at the end of 2022. It's crazy. This year has flown by, right? Like, it's just in a snap. It just seems like it's at the end already. It seems like last year, it was just a moment ago. Last year, it was kind of in the same spot, like thinking about what. 2022 was going to bring and all of that kind of stuff so it's crazy how time flies now but it's really great that you're here because again I'm going to share a lot of valuable information about the music industry and what's happening in 2023 uh, and what we all should be doing as musicians artists and bands so jump down in the chat really quick let me know how you're doing let me know if you can hear me okay and all of that kind of stuff and let me know where you're watching from I've spoken to quite a few of you already in the chat um, Anthony is saying hi. So I spoke to uh, Steve is here. Winter, um, Danielle, um, hey, how are you? J Love, Jams, hey, how's everybody going? Hope everybody had a wonderful holiday. Like it's crazy. Like holidays now for me, it just seems like it comes and goes so quickly. It's just like it sneaks up on you. It's like oh my god, like. Christmas is here. Thanksgiving is here and all of that. And then like in a moment, it's just like gone. It's like, wow. So yeah, it's crazy how fast it snuck up on us. I'm actually preparing for, I have a really big New Year's Eve gig this coming weekend. So I'm actually spending this week getting prepared for that. As you guys probably know that um, New Year's Eve is probably the hottest night of the year for a lot of musicians, artists, and bands. And it's one of the most lucrative nights for musicians, artists, and bands as well, because it's one of those holidays that we as bands and musicians tend to get paid a little bit more than usual. So, yeah. Um, let me see a couple. You guys, let me just speak to a couple more people. We'll go ahead and get started here. Um, John is saying hello. What's up, John? Um Jay, Jay Love is saying you look good and sound good. Thanks. Thanks so much. Hello from Denver, Colorado. Hey, Denver, it's cold up there. I love Colorado, by the way. I went there. It's funny. Colorado is one of the states I've only been to like twice. I was just there a couple of years ago and I was there in a town. I believe it's called Bear Creek. I believe that was what it was called. And it was really cool because it was the summertime when it like I think it was like June and mid of June. And it was so crazy because like it was still snow on the ground there in June. And I, I thought it was the most beautiful thing. It literally looks like a postcard there in Colorado. So, yeah, Colorado is a great place. Um, Danielle said watching from Chicago, Chi town Windy City. I love Chicago. Uh, John is watching from Texas. What's up, my fellow Texas brother? I'm in Texas, too. So cool, cool, cool beings. Uh, another person, from, uh, Cody is saying I'm from Denver. Wow. Quite a few of you guys here from Denver. So I love Denver. I love Colorado. It's you guys live in an amazing place. I love the weather there. It's a little jarring for us people who are coming from like down south because the the altitude there is, you know, you guys are called the mile high state or mile high city or whatever it is. It's like really above sea level. And here in Texas, especially the part of Texas I am, we're probably like right at sea level. So that altitude shift is like really jarring for a lot of us. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Let me just see who else is watching. Um, Mike is saying, enjoy your videos. Thanks so much, Mike. Uh, Youngstown, Ohio, Buffalo originally. OK, Ohio and then Buffalo, New York. Gotcha. Watch it from North Augusta, South Carolina. Gotcha, man. Yeah. All of those places I've been or at least have traveled through a few times. So good stuff. Good stuff. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started here. Let me make sure I got everything going. Um, and we're going to jump right into this presentation. So, again, I got some great information for you guys. So hang with me to the end. We'll get through this pretty quickly. I only estimate this may take about 30, 35 minutes or so, but we'll see. And then, of course, we'll do a Q&A at the end. So if you guys have questions, I have a couple of people who submitted questions already. So we'll get to that. So but as you have questions, you know, throughout the presentation, what I'd like you to do is just drop them in the chat. So and then what I want you to do is include so that I can see that there are questions. Is just put like three question marks before your question and then three question marks after the question. So question mark, question mark, question mark, and then write your question. 
and then question mark, question mark, question mark. That way I can differentiate it from everything else that's going on in the chat. Um, and just a few other housekeeping things. If you guys want, I have the super chats on. If you guys, this is not necessary at all. I just always like to throw it out there. If you guys want to send some super chats, you can. It's you. This this is a free presentation, so you're not obligated to do that at all. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you. If you so decide, you're feeling generous or whatever, you can do that. All right, and that's it, guys. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. All right. Okay. <clears throat> So, hey, everyone, and welcome to I'm sorry, guys, I got the wrong slide up here. Let me go back to my original slide. There we go. Hey, everyone, and welcome to five things musicians should do in 2023. And in this presentation, we are going to be talking about a few crucial talking points. And our discussion flow is going to be starting with the state of the music industry and what's going on in the music industry. I think it's really important for us to understand and have a clear picture or a clear picture, you know, of what's happening in the industry so that we know how we need to operate and some of the things that we need to be doing as working musicians and as artists and musicians and bands that are trying to just level up, you know, and do more and make more money. And then I'm going to talk about what's called the value mindset. And this is something that's really, really crucially important going into 2023 and beyond. So this is something you definitely want to take note of. And then we're going to get into the five crucial things that musicians should do in this coming year. So let's start by talking about the state of the music industry, like what's happening in the music industry. And if I were to describe it in one word, I would say right now that the music industry for us working musicians, us gigging musicians, looking for gigs, looking to level up, make more money and all of that is that the music industry is a bit unstable. And what do I mean by that? So live performances are still down. That's one of the things that's happening still that is sort of left over from the pandemic era. And, you know, live gigs and performances have not come back to the pre pandemic amounts like those gigs that we were doing and the types of gigs that we were doing. Th some of them have come back and, you know, we've been lucky to have some of them, but as far as it being that pre pandemic level of the amount of work that was available for us musicians, it has not come back to that level yet. And venues are still paying pennies to bands and musicians. Right. And you guys know this to be true. Like this is, this is one of these things that's really crazy. Like these venues and clubs and bars and all of that kind of stuff, they have not up their pay to musicians and bands. And I can't even tell you how long it's so funny that I get to talk to a lot of, musicians and a lot of older musicians and I really love talking to them because they give me so much insight on you know what it was like back in the day during gigs and stuff and trying to find gigs and stuff like that and it's so funny that the vast majority of them still say that you know the types of stuff that they were doing the clubs and bars they're still paying the same amount of money that they were getting paid like it back in the 80s and 90s right it's so crazy so that's still happening and then there's many more startup bands that are undercutting high pay, right? Now, I don't want to disparage startup bands and bands who are just getting to into the industry. We all started at some point. So I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just talking about what's happening. So a lot of these bands and stuff that are people are forming new bands and a lot more people are coming in. So the market is a little bit more saturated. So not only do you have this paradigm or this sort of reality of our gig market now where there's not a lot of gigs or at least the gigs that we had before the pandemic are a little bit less than what we had. You have the venues themselves still not willing to pay bands and stuff, any sort of reasonable fees, you know, they're still paying bands and stuff pennies. And then you have a lot more bands and musicians trying to get those gigs. Right. And that creates like this really unstable, uh, sort of thing where it's like everybody's jockeying for these gigs and stuff. So it, it makes it this sort of thing where there's a little bit less 
to go around for everybody. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things that's happening here in, you know, with the music industry that's happening right now. And band stability is at an all time low. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, musicians now are playing with multiple bands, multiple groups, multiple, you know, different types of musicians and all of that. Right. And there's a lack of dedication to any one single band or group. And this makes any success to be had much more difficult to achieve. Right. And so what this means is that, you know, we now have this thing where all of us musicians and it's like I say, it's sort of this. There's a good part of it and there's a bad part of it. The good part of it is that when us musicians were playing with multiple different bands and groups and all of that kind of stuff, we get experience and all of that kind of stuff. Right. And we possibly may it may in some cases possibly mean more opportunities when you're playing with different bands. But the downside of that is that the lack of commitment to any one single band or group is making it a whole lot less likely that any one band or group is going to be successful. And this is what I mean by that is that being a part of a band and being a part of a group is something that, and being successful in that band or group is something that takes time. It's something that takes dedication. You know, every member of the unit, every member of the band working toward a goal for, you know, however long or whatever period of time. And now since musicians are, you know, you got a band together and your bass player is not really dedicated to your band because he's playing with three or four different other bands. So he can't make your gigs. You have to call him and see if he's available. And, you know, that kind of thing is happening. And that makes it much more difficult to be successful because success has always been sort of this thing that works a whole lot easier and a whole lot better when you have a group of people or at least more than one person working toward the same goal. Right. So that's one of the things that's actually happening in the music industry right now as well. Now, another thing that's happening is musicians, because of all of this kind of stuff, have found other ways to make money. So musicians have moved to streaming and doing virtual concerts, also e-learning and online content creation are at an all time high. Musicians who are capitalizing on this are winning in a major, major way. Now, here is what I mean by this. Of course, you've seen it. Musicians have moved to doing a lot of the uh, online virtual stuff, the online teaching and all of that e-learning. So musicians are doing a lot of the teaching online. We know that the pandemic brought us a sort of a blessing in disguise, so to speak, where, you know, everybody kind of went online for everything. And we realized that there was a market there. I mean, it was already booming and it was already headed toward this direction. It's just that the pandemic accelerated it a lot. So a lot of us musicians and stuff have gone to that sort of thing, right? And musicians who are capitalizing on this, they're winning in a major way. If you guys have been watching, and I know most of you here have, have seen a lot of my recent videos, you've seen that I've been talking a lot about content creation and the creator economy and getting in on YouTube and all of that kind of stuff. And it's, I'm not just saying that because, you know, it sounds like this catchy thing. I know you've heard other people say it too. It's not just the catchy thing that's happening. It's literally the case now where the creator economy, and we'll talk a little bit about this, but the creator economy is like one of the major economies of the world. So if you guys remember, uh, if you kind of know a little bit about history, you know that there was like the industrial age. Um, there was the, what are, what's the other age? I forgot what it is, but it was like the industrial age where there was a lot of industrial type of work and that was the biggest market. Well, then we moved into the information age now, and that's created the creator economy and all of that. Well, most people are forecasting that this creator economy now is going to be the biggest economy of all time. It's going to supersede the industrial age and the industrial economy and all of that by a mile. So that's good news for us musicians and artists, because there's a lot of 
you know, real estate, so to speak, real estate for and money for us musicians to go around for everybody to get their fair share. That's really good news for us. And we're seeing a lot of musicians already be successful with this. Right. We're seeing people, musicians go to this online learning platforms and, you know, teaching music and playing music. I, I follow a couple of musicians and artists like on YouTube. And this one particular guy, he's a guitar player and he does basically cover songs. He gets on YouTube and performs cover songs with his guitar. And he has like over a million subscribers, million followers and all of that kind of stuff. And he, you know, does cover stuff with other people. And then he's able to also do his original music and get that out and sell that. So he's making a kit like just with, I'll have to talk to you guys about the YouTube and we'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but YouTube really is the way guys. I am not kidding. There are so many ways to make money from doing like social media and and in particularly YouTube, but we'll get into that. It's a little bit outside the scope of what we're talking about now, but it's so many ways to do that. So that's pretty much, you know, a snapshot of what's going on in the music industry. These are, you know, important things for us to know so that we can see what's happening. We can see what's happening out there in that world and we can sort of know what we need to do when it comes to doing this kind of stuff. Right. And so what does this mean for you? Well, you got to think differently, guys, if you want to succeed. The truth is you can no longer depend on gigs alone to be successful. <laughs> you just can't do that anymore. I know a lot of us musicians are trying, but you can't do that anymore. You have to take control of your career if you want to succeed. No bar club, venue, promoter, or anything like that is going to give you anything. They're not going to give you success. I'll say that again. No bar gig, no club gig, no venue or anything like that, or promoter is going to give you anything. They're not going to give you success. Guys, this is, I can't tell you how important this is. I, I talk to so many musicians and one of the biggest questions that I get all the time, no matter what the question, even when a lot of people submitted questions for this particular presentation is that everybody wants to know how to get more gigs, right? And that's cool. And I, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. We all should be trying to get more gigs because, you know, we want to play. And at the end of the day, that's what we do as musicians. We play and perform. But there's like this underlying thing of understand or people thinking that getting more gigs is what's going to ultimately lead to success. So check this out. I've, I did the math on this one day, so I can't give you the exact numbers, but let's just say you were sort of an in-demand musician and you did gigs say twice a week, like you did a Friday and Saturday night every weekend for a year. So 52 weeks out of the year, that's 52 gigs uh, or 104 gigs at a hundred dollars a piece, right? hundred dollars per gig. You guys do the math. What is, what is the math on that? Right? 104 gigs times like a typical hundred dollar gig, which you guys know my position on a hundred dollar gig, right? Times 104. What's the, what's the math on that? You guys let me know in the chat. What's the math on that? I got the figure in my head. I'm just trying to see if you guys are keeping up. What's the math on it? There's a bit of a delay. So I know you guys are <laughs> kind of, hearing me late a little bit. So I'll, I'll wait for you to say that, but what's the math on it? 104 gigs times a hundred dollars, right? Now, when you put that figure in, let me know if any of any of us, any of you are able to, with that number, support yourself, support your family, pay your bills, pay your card note, your cell phone bill, all of that kind of stuff for an extended period of time. It's probably more so like you'd probably be able to do that for like in a in a inexpensive city. Oh God, if you live somewhere like Los Angeles, you can forget about it. But in a sort of in less expensive city, you could probably live for maybe a month or two off that if you had that amount of money, right? So y'all got it, $10,400, right? And that's so, and then most musicians aren't even doing that nowadays. Most musicians aren't working that amount. Some are working more, but you're talking about averages. So let's just, we would say it's $15,000, just say on average. Even that, you're talking about 
not a lot of money, right? So again, jockeying for all of these bar gigs, these club gigs, it's cool. Like if it's just a thing where you want to play and you're trying to get out there and, you know, maybe get some experience, cool, perfect, no problem. But in the vein of trying to build something, trying to build success, trying to, you know, get paid serious money, because guys, I can tell you, I'm a musician myself. I've, I've been full time for a while and I can tell you, <laughs> A lot of people just don't see the vision. A lot of people don't see what's possible. I'm not kidding, guys. I just did a gig. This was three weeks ago now. I got hired for a gig. This is, I, I'm not kidding. I wish I was, <laughs> I could tell you something different. I just did a gig where I was paid $15,000. Not kidding. I just did a gig three weeks ago where I was paid $15,000. And guess what? We're not talking about like this long. You would think that kind of money. It's like this. Oh, I had to play eight hours like nonstop. And it was like I played for two and a half hours with two breaks. I'm not kidding, guys. So I'm telling you like this. A lot of people don't see. This is why I'm so passionate about what I teach on this channel. So many people just don't see that stuff like that is possible. And I, I get it. Like I say, I was there. I got it. You know, it, there was a time where I didn't see because no, I had nobody telling me this stuff that I'm telling you guys now. I had nobody saying, hey, it's possible for those gigs that people are really, really willing to pay top dollar for, you know, entertainment and things that they like. And, you know, it wasn't until I got that into my like mind and I saw it, it was like, OK, well, let me try to start reaching for that. And it became a lot easier than you might think. So anyway, I don't want to harp on that too long. I'm just here to let you guys know what's possible and what you can be doing, because this is this is something that's available to all of us. Right. And so here's the trick about this whole thing. Here's the trick about everything that we're talking about. There's something called the value mindset that undergirds. I would say pretty much 99% of everything that we're going to be doing in the coming year of 2023 and beyond, right? This is the sort of foundation of what it's going to take to be successful and make money. And here it is the quickest way to succeed with what we do as bands and artists and musicians is to provide value provide value. You need to focus on providing solutions and solving problems. The musicians and artists and bands who do this best will win in this coming year and beyond. Oh my God. If there was uh, one of the questions that is sort of, of a philosophical question that I sort of think about for myself all the time is, you know, what would I tell people if I if I only had like 15 seconds to talk to someone, like talk to an up and coming artist, musician, a band and just give them something and, you know, provide them with some value. What would I tell them? I think this would be the thing that I would tell them. It would be to learn how to position what you do in a way that it provides value to other people and it solves their problems. Right. This is something that is extremely important in this information age that we're in. There's a lot of fluff going around. As we've seen, there's a lot of you can pretty much get information about anything. You have to decipher whether or not it's true and all of that kind of stuff. And what has happened is this has left people in a position of. You know, they still want solutions to their problems and their issues. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about problems and issues. I know it can be a little confusing because you're thinking like, well, I'm all I do is play music. How am I like, what, what does it have to do with somebody's problems or solutions? Well, I'll tell you. So I play for a lot of weddings. I am in. I'm really deep into the wedding industry. I play probably 60, 70 weddings a year. And that's probably not, I'm being modest about that number, but I can tell you one of the reasons that I get a lot of those gigs is because I position what I do as a solution to problems that they're having. So check this out. This is how I do it. 
what I do is I understand that when a bride or a couple or whatever is preparing for their wedding, it's a sort of a hectic process, right? They have to get all of the venues taken care of. They got to pay people. There's wedding planners. There's all of this stuff that they have to do. And I also am aware that there's a lot of sort of stereotypes about out there with musicians and bands and stuff like that, where, you know, bands suck and they don't play the music that they like and all of this kind of stuff. So I know people have that in their head. So what we have there is a sort of problem, a sort of, you know, thing that they are worried about. So what I do is I come in and position what I do as a solution to that. So I say, hey, you know, if you hire me for your wedding, this is something that you're going to get. I'm going to provide you peace of mind, right? You're not going to have to worry about me being on time. I'm going to be there and I'm going to be there like super early. I'm going to talk with you about the songs you want to hear and you want played at your wedding. I'm going to, you know, make sure that I'm entertaining. One of the things that I press about my particular band, and even if I'm playing stuff solo, is that we do a focus on keeping everybody entertained and dancing. So I'm letting them know that. So, and I'm pitching to them these ideas of like, hey, I'm going to make this a night to remember. This is what you want. This is your wedding day. And I know you wanted a big day. I mean, I know you want it to be a special day. So I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this experience, right? That's what I mean by providing a solution to a problem. So again, I don't, don't want to get too deep into that, but I just wanted to explain to you what I meant by that. But again, the musicians and artists and bands who are doing this the best will be the people who win. I'm telling you that now it's already proving itself to be true. So this is some of the things that we have to do going into 2023. This And this is the value mindset, right? This is what we need to be focusing on. Now, so let's get into the top five things that musicians should be doing this year with everything that we just talked about, right? What are the top five things that musicians should be doing with all of this stuff in mind? Well, number one, you got to be releasing music and you got to be promoting it. Having your music available is one of the most important things that you can do. It's of utmost importance. It is now the number one thing that defines an artist, man, or musician. And it's even better when you also have video available because we're kind of in that video era and that video age, right? So here's what I mean by this. And you guys kind of know the importance of this. And this, I think a lot of us get held up because we don't think our, whatever our original stuff is, or even if we're doing cover songs and all of that kind of stuff, it's that good. But one of the most defining things that, help me personally and help people who I train get gigs and stuff like that. Pretty much I would say about 90% of the people who hire them want to see something that they've done and want to hear something that they've done. It's cool that you, you have your band and you know, you guys say you're good and all of this kind of stuff, but we're in that show me era. Like people want to see and people want to hear it. And it doesn't have to be spectacular. You don't have to go into like this, major recording studio and spend thousands and thousands of dollars to put a project together to go out and try to sell. It's not that kind of thing. These days, everybody and their mom has like a, a laptop, a studio interface and, you know, some software to record some stuff on Logic Pro, Cubase, Pro Tools, all of the kind of stuff is so easy to get now. And, you know, there's a lot of people who know how to mix and master music and stuff. Now it's really easy to do. So this is one of the things that you have to do because this is one of this is like the business card for musicians. So when people are trying to hire you, this is what you're handing them. You're handing them this business card, right? It's like an EPK kit and all of that kind of stuff. So you need to be releasing your music and promoting it. This is one of the, you know, the most important things that you can be doing, right? And also this helps you reach new people and audiences when you're releasing and promoting your music. It helps you build a loyal fan base around your music. And most importantly, it can generate lots of income, right? And at the end of the day, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to, again, build success, build a legacy, build, you know, a following and a loyal fan base around what we do. And the, the way that we do this, and this is something that I'll explain to you as well. One of the things I talk about in a lot of my trainings is that audiences now have become a lot more tribal, right? 
they're a lot more tribal. And what I mean by that is that people and audiences sort of glom onto the ideas of artists and people more easily. And they sort of separate themselves and define themselves based off that like. So, for example, one of the examples I give all the time is Beyonce. So Beyonce has the Beehive, right? So you've heard the Beehive. That's the name of her fan group. And that fan group is like loyal to her. They are loyal. So no matter what she puts out, no matter what she says, does or whatever, they are loyal to that group. Lizzo. Same thing. Her fan group is always the funniest name because her fan group is called the Lesbians. So I know some people always laugh at, but her fan group is called the Lesbians. They are a loyal group of followers and fans and they're tribal. Like they support her no matter what she does. Right. Justin Bieber has the Beliebers. Right. That's his fan group. All fans of Justin Bieber and on and on and on. So and this has sort of narrowed down into what we do is just what I would call us sort of just normal people, <laughs> you know, that we're not famous and stuff like that, but the audiences still do the same thing. They support, they want to glom onto something and support individual artists and sort of have a tribe based around them. And that's such good news for us artists and musicians, because it makes it a whole lot easier for us to build a fan base around what we do. But again, it comes from the stuff that we put out. You got to be putting out music. You got to be putting out that stuff. So if you want that huge fan base, you got to give people something to build that fan base around. So this is one of the most important things that we can be doing in the coming year. Now, number two, and I know you guys have seen this by now. You got to start using AI, artificial intelligence. AI is the future, guys, and it will likely be a huge part of our lives going forward. You've seen the recent demonstrations and you've seen the recent talk around AI and artificial artificial intelligence, right? People who learn to use it the fastest will make the most money. It's already being used in music production and it's going to be big in the education industry. Actually, it's already big in the education industry and particularly music education because it has very high practical value for musicians. So what are we talking about now? Don't get scared. I know a lot of times when we talk, start talking about AI and artificial intelligence, a lot of people's mind goes to like Terminator and, you know, you know, Skynet taking over the world and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, we may be headed toward that. I have no idea. All I know is that right now, this is the current state of what's happening. I'll, I'll show you guys. Up. I'll actually demonstrate this for you guys in a second. But this this AI technology is. Has in the past couple of months, like with the chat GPT and the Linza app where people are doing all of the pictures and stuff like that. It's sort of like making some really huge strides in this industry and for good reason, because what I mean by that, it has high practical value. We're going to be able to use this for a lot. So let me show you guys something really quick. I'll, I'll open up. Let me go to hold on. Let me let me change back to my camera. So you guys not see when I'm everything I'm doing here on screen. So you don't get distracted. So I'll open up this chat GPT, right? And let me share my screen. Now, actually, let me just as I'm putting up everything. Here we go. All right. So this is the chat GPT thing, right? This technology, this AI thing is absolutely crazy. It's stupid. Let's say you are we can just make up something. Let's say you are a musician. You want to start online music lessons, right? You want to teach guitar lessons to students that, I don't know, 20 and under, or let's just say 15, or let's go 10, let's go 10 and under, teaching guitar to 10 and under. Watch this. So we can ask a question to this, like how, or let me see, what should a beginner, how do you spell beginner? B-E-G-I-N-E-R guitarist you are t-a-r-i-s-t learn about the guitar right and i spelled that wrong there we go all right 
Well, let's just say what are, let's do it like this. We'll make it even more hard for this. What are 10 things a beginning beginner guitar should learn about the guitar? Watch this, push enter. Look at this. This is stupid. <laughs> now, right here, just in the click of a button, you have, let's say you wanted to do an online course about beginning guitar, right? This is your entire script right here. These are your courses. These are your classes. These are your videos, right? The first video, the parts of the guitar, how to hold the guitar, how to tune the guitar, basic chords, right? It's like you don't even have to think about anything. This AI, guys, I'm telling you, is stupid good. It's stupid crazy. And I'm telling you the, the quickest or the people who learn this to use this stuff the fastest, it's always the case with any technology. When, if you think about when the iPhone came out, the people who knew how to use iPhones and stuff and smartphones first were the people showing other people how to do it and they were getting paid to do that. So when new technology and when new stuff comes around, we have to jump on it fast. And this is going to be something, this is already something that's happening in the music industry and in the education industry. I know teachers right now in, that are t school teachers that are using this to write out their lesson plans. You know, when teachers, if you have teachers friends, you may know about this, that where they, you know, spend hours going and coming up with lesson plans and stuff like that they have to do. And they're now doing this in a click of a button. This is stupid. So I'm telling you, there's a lot of ways. And like I said, it's still early on. So we don't know exactly how this is going to impact everything and what's, you know, what's going to be where. But I can tell you with almost a hundred percent degree of certainty that this is going to be big. So you got to get on AI. I'm not going to harp on it too long because I don't want to make it seem like this is, oh, AI is just like the biggest thing because it, it can just like anything else. Two years ago, everybody was saying the same thing about NFTs, right? And now NFTs are kind of phasing out a little bit. They've kind of had their run. So we'll see how this goes. But as of right now, this is going to be big. All right. So this is the second thing you need to start doing in the coming year. Now, number three, and this may be the most important thing on this list, is that you need to be going all in on the creator economy. You need to be going all in on it. We just talked about the creator economy a little bit at the beginning. All projections of the creator economy state major growth in this coming year. Check out these numbers. It's expected to reach 6.7 trillion by 2027. And it was 4.4 trillion in 2020. Now to put this in context, this is what I always like to do with this, this number. So people understand trillion. Put this in context, one trillion seconds, right? Like seconds on the clock equals 31,709 years. Guys, what, like, what the heck? That's, that's how big a trillion is. Just one trillion, one trillion seconds is 31,709 years. So, Put that in context about how big this creator economy is growing. It's going to be worth 6.7 trillion by 2027. And that's, those are modest projections, right? Those are really modest projections. A lot of other projections are projecting it to be even higher. So again, this is one of the things that we need to be doing, right? So this is the new way for artists and musicians to make money. This is what it's come to for us. This is the big thing for us. It's the best way to grow a large following and a fan base, right? And if you don't get in on this, on this creator economy now, it may be too late by this time next year. So as we just talked about with, you know, the, the second thing, the AI thing, technology and stuff moves really quickly. And what happens is when people, when a lot of people are sitting around that forecast and business people who you know, are in the industry and want to make money, all of that kind of stuff there, they bank on stuff like this because this is the kind of stuff that makes money, right? And the creator economy, the pandemic has caused it to accelerate at a crazy rate, guys. 
So this is why you're seeing a lot of people. I know, again, I know you guys have been singing on YouTube. A lot of people have been talking about, hey, start a YouTube channel. Hey, do this, start this, do this, start that, right? It's for good reason. I'll show you guys. Let me show you guys this really quick. I'll show you what happened to me on Instagram, right? Let me see. Let me go to my Instagram. Let me see. And um, I have to log in. Okay, hold on. It's giving me a security code to log in. I'll tell you what's, hold on. Okay, let me show you guys what has happened on my Instagram in the past. Okay, eight days, one, I'm sorry, one, here we go. So you guys, what has happened on my Instagram page? This is, this is what is possible for you guys on social media. This, uh, this is what's happened to me on my recent Instagram. Um, let me see if I, it's not letting me show it, show it to you guys. Okay, actually here it is. Let me bring that up. This is my Instagram guys right here. Check out my followers right now. Can you see that? 100,000 followers. I just, it's crazy because it was kind of my Christmas present. I just reached that on Christmas day. And this has happened to me in the past four months. So since August, I started experiencing a boom and this is what's happening. And I'm telling you, this is the creator economy. So you can see some of my videos. All I have been doing is creating performances, Perf me performing and stuff like this. I had a couple of videos that went viral creator economy. This is what's possible. And let me tell you guys what has happened from this right now. So that gig that I just told you about uh, earlier, with that I did a few weeks ago, $15,000 gig came from this. Somebody saw me performing on Instagram, reached out to me and said, Hey, we have this thing. We have something going on that we would really like to talk to you. Can you send us your information? Can you know, how can we book you and stuff like that? So, and I've gotten lots of those requests, but this was the biggest one out of them all. Um, and it just came from this. This is why guys, this is why you need to be going in on the creator economy. Again, I know a lot of people are saying this. I know a lot of people are talking about it. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, build YouTube and all this kind of, it's for good reason. Please, please, please get in on this creator economy. All right, so that's the third thing, right? Now next, you gotta focus on collaborating with other musicians. And the reason is because collaboration has always been one of the best outlets for getting opportunities. It builds relationships and leads, uh, I'm sorry, it builds relationships and a sense of community, right? It helps you get your music out to more people. Collaboration increases creativity. It helps you be, become more accountable for learning your own craft. And all of these benefits, everything that I just said here, is ultimately to help you make more money. These benefits, they will ultimately help you make more money, right? So again, collaboration, this is something um, that I've seen a lot of return on investment in. And this is one of the reasons is because I teach a lot of people this, uh, especially people who are trying to basically get started and basically start out. This is specifically or particularly works well for them, but it works great for everybody. One of the quickest ways that you can grow is just collaborate with people who are already there and who are already better than you, who have, you know, more knowledge and expertise with you than you, right? Gain their knowledge, garner off of them, hang with them. You're good to go. This is, this, this one is almost self-explanatory, but it's kind of, it needs to be stated because so many musicians don't do it, right? So many musicians still, you know, try to do everything by themselves. And it's just, it's so crazy that, you know, just the collaboration, like we just talked about releasing your music. If you don't know how to record, you don't know how to, you know, mix and master music and stuff like that. I guarantee you, you probably know somebody that does or, you know, somebody that knows somebody that can help you with that. And the collaboration can help you get that done a whole lot faster. And guess what that means? The faster you get it done, the faster you get your music out, the faster you got that business card you know, business card, as I talked about with your music being out there, the faster you can hand that to people. One of the things that, you know, I hear a lot of musicians ask about all the time is about when they talk about getting gigs and they go to talk to club owners and venues and stuff like that about getting gigs and they get frustrated because those venues and club owners don't call them back. 
my first question is like, well, what did you show them? What did you give them? Well, we had this, you know, we co recorded ourselves on, you know, our cell phone. And it's this, you know, you got this crappy <laughs> audio, crappy video, well, unwell lit video and stuff like that. You Well, like, would you hire you? So again, with all of this stuff, with putting out, getting a good video, you probably, even yourself, have a good camera. Even you could do something like that with your phone, get some lights and stuff. Or if you don't have that, you know somebody that knows somebody that does, right? This is the importance of collaboration. So you have no excuse about getting things done. If you don't know how to do something or if you're having trouble doing something and you need help with it, just reach out to other people to help for them to help you get it done. Collaborate. So that's the next thing that we should be doing in the coming year. Now, number five, and guys, this is <laughs> this is in the vein of collaboration, but this this kind of goes deeper with it. In the coming year, you have to get help. The biggest mistake that musicians make is trying to go at it alone. It's the biggest mistake by far. Everything you want to achieve is 10 times more difficult when trying to reach it alone. There are not many musicians that reach their goals and dreams by doing it all by themselves. But having help allows you to accomplish your goals much easier and much faster. The role of the guide is one of the most essential characters in every major story for good reason. The support system you have will be a massive part in your success or your lack of success, right? And here's what I mean by that. So the guide, right? The guide, if you've ever, if you've ever heard the, um, the what's called the hero's journey, it's basically a story trope that you see permeated through a lot of movies. And in that story trope, there's a different characters. And one of the characters is called the guide. So think Star Wars, right? Yoda in Star Wars plays the role of the guide. Yoda is basically responsible for getting Luke to a certain place, you know, getting Luke to learn the ways of the Jedi and all of that, right? That's the guide. So without the guide, there is no Luke. There's the guide is the person that's responsible for setting up or helping set up Luke's success, right? Think of anything. Think of the Avengers movies. Like, who put the Avengers together? Who was the God? Who was the person that was behind that? Nick Fury, right? Nick Fury became the God. Nick Fury was the person who had the idea, the mindset to see something beyond what these individual, you know, characters, Captain America, Iron Man, all of that, Incredible Hulk, all of them had a vision about them that they didn't have for themselves. And they put that, put that together and from that became the Avengers, right? So guide people success. That's the importance of getting help. Like you, you really have to see that. This is one of the things that, again, I see, I talk to so many musicians and it's just, it's disheartening that, you know, a lot of us, I know a lot of you guys try, you do, you try really hard. You, you put in effort, you say, Hey, I want to do this thing. I want to make more money. I'm going to start putting in effort, all of this kind of stuff. But you start doing it by yourself and it's like, well, you don't have to do that. And it's taking so much longer and you get discouraged because like it's it's it can be a hard process. It's I mean, it takes work for anybody to do it, even when you have a team and when you have help. But it's a lot easier, guys. It's so much easier when you have help. So this is what you need to be doing in 2023 and beyond, guys. This is one of the most important things going forward. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask people and help and get resources from people you trust, um, you know, to help you achieve whatever it is that you need to achieve. If you need a guide, if you need a person that's there going, to be, I, I have one. I have one that I call my mentor. I have the, the person that is much older than me that gave me my first gig now over almost, what, 25 years ago. I still have that person in my life and he was an older musician. He's about 25, 30 years older than me. So he has knowledge about stuff and experience with stuff that I don't have. So guess what? When I have questions about doing stuff or how the music industry was back in the day or, 
you know, some things that I may need to be doing differently or something like that. I reach out because I have someone to guide me. I have someone to, I can garner information off. And that makes me better. It makes me a better person, makes me a better musician and ultimately helps me be more successful in what I'm trying to do. So you got to get help, guys. This is one of the most important things that you can do in this coming year. OK, so now what? We've talked about all of this. These are the important things that musicians should be doing in the coming year. So now what? What do we do now? Well, guys, it is time to pivot. It's time to make change if you want to succeed. I say that again. It is time to make a change if you want to succeed. The price of success is action. No accomplishment, achievement, or success happens without action. This is something that is extremely important, guys. You got to take action. This is like everything that we've talked about in this presentation so far. The thing that undergirds that are two things. The value thing that I mentioned and taking action. So none of this means anything if you don't act on it. It just doesn't. None of it means any, it's just information that's in one ear and out the other sounds good. Okay, cool. But if you don't take action, none of it is relevant, right? So then what if there was a simple way you could learn to build your music business, grow your fan base and radically transform your music, music career so that you could have more free time, right? What if you could learn to make like the passive income that I always talk about from you know, business and YouTube and social media and all of that and easily survive as a musician and artist in a band and, you know, learn to market and advertise yourself correctly. You know, go full time with your music and have, you know, really that personal freedom and fulfillment that we all want as musicians and artists. One of the reasons we got into this is because we want that freedom. We want to be able to express our creativity and have that fulfill us, but also be able to make a living from it, right? That's, that's what we got into this for. And what if you could make your life easier and more fun and more interesting, right? What if you could stop feeling stuck and actually grow and gain the impact that you want? You know, that impact that we all want. Uh, you know, I think a part of this for a lot of us is that, you know, a lot of us want to be known and famous as musicians, and that's great. You know, but I think it really comes down to the impact. We want to impact and influence others. We want what we do to mean something to other people. Right. We you know, we play, we do our stuff and we perform, you know, and, and on a good day when people take that in and take our performance in, and they feel something from it. Oh, my God, that's so like it's great for us. Right. That's what we want as artists and musicians. Well, you know. Would you want to know this way if, you know, if I could tell you how to do all of these things, would you want to know it? Well, I've got it. So, guys, listen, this is your big opportunity. This is what it's coming to. This is your big opportunity. So I want to introduce to you musicians in a circle. Musicians helping musicians, right? Musicians in a circle. So what is this? What is musicians in a circle? Well, it's called MIC for short, Mike, right? Pretty cool acronym, right? <laughs> it's called Mike. Well, Musicians in a Circle is an exclusive community of musicians dedicated to learning, growing, and making meaningful and beneficial connections. And what it gives you is an online database of specific educational courses to help you learn and grow. And some of the benefits of it, and this is everything that you get, you know, by being a part of, you know, MIC is that one, you learn to grow your business and increase your income from gigs and other performances. You know, you get exclusive access to me and my resources to help you grow and go full time really fast and really quickly. Right. You get the ability to get your questions answered so that you always have direction. And this is one of the things that I always talk about getting your questions. We always have questions. I have questions all the time. This is why I, I just told you I always reach out to like one of my mentors and, you know, ask questions. That's so important. You get also uh, monthly training and courses that focus on business 
and wealth building to help give you time and freedom. And then you also get discounts on premium high impact courses. And basically what that means is a lot of times I reach, I release a lot of courses and some of my courses are high impact, high dollar courses. Uh, some of them go for, you know, upwards of a thousand dollars. And what I've done for the people who are members of MIC is basically give them that at a huge discount. And honestly, guys, I just tell you the honest truth. I haven't, <laughs> they've, everybody that's been a member has pretty much got them all for free. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> but so that's one of the benefits of musicians in a circle, right? Now, now listen, I've, I've helped and coached and trained hundreds of musicians to make a living and be successful by using their talents. But, you know, as I, I stated, when I started this out, I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't know the importance of like business and how to set prices, how to get gigs, how to promote my music, how to talk to venue owners, none of that stuff. I didn't know any of that stuff when I started out. But now I'm in a different place. I'm a full time musician and I've been able to live comfortably by just using my musical skills. Right. But this all started like everything that I've gotten to now just all started with me leveling up myself personally and learning and growing in these business strategies and being able to get questions that I had answered and what I mentioned. Right. Taking action, taking action. All right. Now, warning before I tell you more about musicians in a circle, I have to warn you that because the offer I'm about to tell you about is an insanely low cost to you. And because it's really low, the registration for it will only be open for a very short period of time right at this price. And then the registration will close and the pricing will not be offered again. All right. So fair warning to you. All right. So by now you're probably thinking that this is amazing. Like everything I'm talking about is amazing. Musicians in a circle sounds great, but I really thought long and hard about, you know, how I can make it even better for you. And I came up with not one, but two amazing bonuses. And each of these bonuses would easily be worth more than seven times the cost of musicians in a circle itself. So here they are. Bonus one, you get free lifetime access to my marketing for musicians course. And what this musicians marketing for musicians course is, is a course that teaches you how to um, do a lot of this stuff. I'll tell you that I, I'll show you here. So this course is all about helping you market yourself or your band in today's music industry. In it, you'll learn about, you know, social media marketing and the key areas musicians should focus on to maximize sale and get more gigs. This course has sold for $197 but you get it free today by joining Musicians Inner Circle. Now, the second bonus you get is a free 20 minute consultation with me. And sorry guys, but I can only do this for the first 25 people. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things. I can only accommodate about 25 people who do this. So if you wanna be those, get this particular bonus, you gotta be one of those first 25 people to get in. Um, and that's just because of the time constraints and stuff that I have. I wish that I could do this for, for more people, but right now 25 is the amount that I can do and accommodate where I can give everybody their just due and their time and their, you know, the attention that they deserve. Right now, you know, this consultation is where you can get specific advice about your career and get a personalized action plan for your next steps in doing music full time or just maximizing your profit from gigs or, you know, just leveling up overall. And the way we'll do it is jump on a zoom call and hash it all out. And you know, my in-person consultations guys start at three fifty. they start at three fifty. but you can get it free today by becoming a part of musicians in a circle, right? Now, so far, these bonuses that I've just told you about, if you were add up to add up the value of them, these just two bonus, just these two bonuses alone would be at over five hundred dollars. So you're getting over five hundred dollars in bonuses, right? All right. So by now, you're probably wondering what the cost of musicians in a circle will be and what is it? Well, drum roll, guys. Here it is. Your investment in Musicians in a Circle today to get all of this transformation in your life 
your investment in Musicians in a Circle is just $67 a month. Just $67 a month, guys. Crazy low price. And this is particularly a low price that I put together specifically for you guys that are here. You will see, I'll reveal this page to you in a minute, but you'll see on the page that it goes for a lot more. So trust me, your investment in today is really low. Now, I want to say that there's no risk to you. Like if any point you join Musicians in a Circle and you determine that it's not right for you, you can stop your monthly payments and then rejoin at a new price, you know, when the time is right for you. And guess what? You get to keep the bonuses. Even if you join today and, you know, you decide it's not right for you, you know, 30 days down the line or however long down the line. And, you know, you get to keep the bonuses. No hard feelings. That's just the way it works. I, I wanted this to be no risk to you at all. Now, again, this is about taking action. So remember, if you want to become a full time musician, you know, and get paid higher, you know, for gigs or get higher paying gigs or get yourself out there. You got to take action, guys. You got to really think about how your life would be different if you commit to learning and growing. All right. So here's what you do now. You're going to click the link in the chat to join me in Musicians Inner Circle today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop this link in the chat. And again, you want to be one of the first people to get in on this, especially if you want to get that bonus. So I'm going to drop the link in the chat right now. Here it is. There's a link. Now, when you click on that link, you'll be taken to a page. And basically what you do is once you're on that page, you're going to click the join now button and you'll be taken to the page where you can put in your information and you'll be able to join MIC. Now, Again, you got to jump on this really quickly because, again, that's, you know, if you want that bonus. All right. Now, one last thing I need to mention that this offer, again, is a limited offer. Registration for this price will only be offered for a very short time. And once it's closed, this pricing will never be offered again and the bonuses will go away. So if you want to get in, you need to act quickly. Now. However, you know, it's not this big deal. I don't want you to feel pressured or anything. If you miss out, don't freak out or anything. It's not that big of a deal. The odds are pretty good that I will offer another chance to get in musicians in a circle at another time. But it will definitely be at a much higher price. I can tell you that now. So if you're ready to take your music career to the next level, then your next step is to click the link in the chat and join me and musicians in a circle today, right now. All right. Now, listen, one more thing, just to make this whole thing more incredible and give you maximum value. I got one more bonus to give you, right? One more bonus. Check this out. So a lot of you guys have seen at this point, a lot of you guys have seen my uh, YouTube quick start course that free that I made free for everyone that you can get and download to get you started on YouTube. There's a lot about that. YouTube now that has changed and that changes over time. And I wasn't able in that course to grow, go into a lot of depth and a lot of detail just because I wanted to be sort of a fast quick start course. That's why it's called a quick start course. But this next bonus I got for you is going to be the YouTube masterclass course, right? Musicians and artists all over the world are using YouTube to grow their following, express their creativity, go full time and make insane amounts, amounts of money from simply making videos on YouTube It's actually pretty stupid. And this course is an in-depth training that will teach you how to use YouTube as a musician quickly and easily. So you have another source of income. And this course is you know, normally two ninety seven, but it's yours free today when you join Musicians Inner Circle. Now, I do have to tell you about this course. It is it won't be available immediately when you join today because it's not it's being created as we we are talking about this now. So just to be upfront with you, it's not completely available today, but it will be in the coming weeks. Just a few weeks, you'll have access to it. But this is another bonus that I have decided to give you. Everyone that joins today 
this YouTube masterclass. Going into 2023, you need to be starting a YouTube channel and this masterclass is going to give you everything that you need to get started and make to make money really quickly and give you some in-depth training on this behind the scenes YouTube stuff that a lot of people are not telling you about on YouTube, right? So again, this is another bonus that you get for joining today. Now, so if you add up the bonuses of these two, uh, now three <laughs> bonuses that I'm giving you, now you're at over $800 in bonuses. All right, so final note on all of this, you know, I'm not some fly by night musical music magician who's gonna give you the world. I'm not promising you that guys, I'm not. This is simple. I stumbled onto a discovery about how to be successful or discoveries about how to be successful in the music industry, the current music industry some years ago. And that has become the basis for mine and other success that, you know, I teach and train in this music industry thing. And since then I've continued to work on it, refine it and adding to it and perfecting it. The result is the reason for musicians in a circle. I wanted to be able to share all of this information that I've learned with you. So if you're ready to take your next, you know, your music career to the next level, then your next step is to click that link in the chat and join me in Musicians Inner Circle today. All right. So again, guys, now's the time. You know, it's your it's your time to step up. It is it's your time to step up. There's never been a better time. But you have to act now again on this. This registration is going to close really soon on Musicians in a Circle. So you got to act now. Now's the time to act. Join Musicians in a Circle now and say yes to achieving all of this stuff that you want to achieve. Your dreams as an artist, as a band, as a musician. Go ahead and click that link and join now. All right. And that's it, guys. We're going to move into Q&A here. Let me get a sip of water here and see what you guys are talking about in the chat. seeing a lot of people um oh my god man is that <laughs> is it is that 25 taken up already is that what i'm seeing hold on wow you guys are yeah this is this is what i mean by taking action guys this is exactly what i mean like it's a lot of yeah okay so no not all of them there's still let's see one still not okay nine left oh well eight now so i just see somebody else here. so still eight left now eight spots left with that um with that free bonus of the consultation okay so all right let's go over to let's do some q a guys let's go over here to the chat and see what you guys are asking so here's a question that came in from winter i have a couple questions that i'll get to that people wrote in already but let me get to these ones in the chat. So let's see, Winter. Let me see, Winter, are you the first person that asked a question? Let me go back up a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so Winter is asking, use it for designing artwork, but how would I use it as a singer with a self-contained act? I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about AI there, Winter? Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe you're talking about the AI there. So yeah. Um as a singer, as a self-contained act. Well, I mean, anything. So let me go back to this chat GPT again. Let's just say I still have it on this. Let me share my screen here. Uh, there we go. I still have it on that. These, this question that I asked about, what did I say? What are the 10 things a beginner guitarist could learn? So you could do this as a singer. Um, I would say you could do it with song lyrics. So knowing about where, song lyrics from so let's just say something like uh what's a popular song don't stop believing hold on i always misspell okay i forgot to put the <laughs> thing that i hate when i misspell so uh e v i -N. right uh let's say what's the best i don't know what's the best way to perform Can't spell who guys. What's I don't know why. I'm trying to type here and look at this thing at the same time. What's the best way to put as a singer? Let's see what it says. Let's see what it comes up with. 
tips with performing at a singer. Wow. Look at this. Practice the vocal range. Work on the phrasing. Use dynamic. <laughs> this, this thing is stupid good. <coughs> Excuse me. This thing is stupid good. Consider the tone. Have fun. There you go. There you go, Winter. What are some ways you could use this as a vocalist, as a singer? There you go. Really quick like that, just asking a simple question. You got <laughs> you got these answers to that, right? That is stupid good. So I don't know. What are some ways you could, you know, keep your voice healthy? Something like that. You This thing is so good. You can research a lot of the anything that you kind of want to know, and it gives you like crazy answers for it. So, yeah, I mean, that's this is something, again, that's really new. I think we'll discover new ways to use it as we, you know, progress through using it right now, still you new. And I think this thing is still it's again, it's AI. So it's a it's a self-contained thing that's learning and growing itself pretty much all the time. So the more people use it, the more information and stuff that it's going to have. So, yeah, that's one of the one of the ways that you can use it. Right. All right. So let me get to a couple of the other. Let me check the chat one more time and then see. Uh, OK, so Theo Simpson saying, hello, I have a question. I was wondering if you can help me with something after this live video. Um, Theo, yes. So what I'll do is if I can, of course, I'll help. Um, Claire is here. Hey, Claire. That's my friend Claire. I didn't see you earlier. Um, <laughs> they're going to say, let me hold three. k. <laughs> you crazy, man. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, Theo, shoot me an email, man, to uh, at music space. Uh, three at Gmail dot com spelled music space like the channel itself, M-U-S-I-K-S-P-A-C-E three at Gmail dot com. And if it's something that I can help with. Sure. Yeah, man. So just let me know. Um. OK, so let's see. All right. So let me get to a couple of other questions. So I had some pre questions sent in pre questions. I don't know if that's a thing. Uh, okay, guys. So let me check. Hold on. One, two. Now we're only down to. We're down to. Okay, wait, let me go back because I got to count. I got to see. Let me refresh. Four. So only four spots left in that 25 guys. So if you want to get in on that. Um, you need to do that now. Okay. So let me get to the other questions. Let's see what we have here. Um, this question came in from John. Uh, John is asking, how do you get corporate clients? That question is really good. Okay. So I'll tell you guys my secret about this. This is sub. Okay. So take this down. Let me show you this. Um, let me open this up. Okay. Wait a minute. So it's not loading it right. Internet is crazy. So let me Google search. Let me see. Okay. So, all right, here we go. Let me share the screen with you guys. All right. So, um, let me go back to the main thing. Okay. This site, this is this is the answer to your question. This is one of the easiest ways that you guys can learn to get um, corporate gigs. This is a website called allconferences.com. So all conferences, A-L-L-C-O-N-F-E-R-E-N-C-E-S.com, <clears throat> allconferences.com. What this is, again, it's a global online conference directory. Right. So it showcases over 100,000 conferences, conventions, trade shows, exhibits, expos and seminars, corporate style events. Right now, what you can do, I, I tell people about this trick all the time. All you have to do here, one of the easiest ways to do it is sign up or uh, create an account here. Uh, you can see you can't see it at the top of my page. I have it. But there's a sign up button like right above this red line right here. You can go up and, and log in or sign up. And you don't have to do this. You can do this any other way. So what you want to do is go here and search conference by name or category. So you can search 
any conferences in any state or any location that you want to go. So search by location. You can go to USA if you live in the U.S. Go to whatever state you want to go to. Somebody was from, what was it? Let's say Colorado. So let's go. Wait, did I change that to U.S.? Oh, there we go. Colorado. Search by gigs in Colorado. So you can search uh, and then you can put in the dates here. So let's just say you want to look for some stuff in January. See what's happening in January 1st, um, 2023 to let's say the end of June. Uh, June 31st, 2023, right? Where am I going there? 2023, there we go. So you can search this and select the dates that you want to do and just just do a click search here. See the different types of stuff that's happening in your city, wherever you want to uh, find gigs at. And then what they will have here is a, they will have a, um, a directory of the people who are over that event and the, the sponsors and the people who are in charge of the hiring entertainment or hiring whoever. And what you want to do is you want to reach out to those people. Simple as that. You want to reach out to them, pitch your, pitch your services, pitch your band. You remember I talked about earlier about, um, about being about value early in the presentation. This is why that matters. I don't talk about stuff guys just to be talking about it. This is what, this is where that comes into place. You want to be pitching your service to services to them. Now I'll tell you, this is a great resource. It's not something I'll say that you'll probably have success with it. Probably one out of every 10, 12 or so pitches that you make. So it's not something that's going to give you a gig every time you use it. Uh, because the truth about these things is a lot of these people who have these conferences and events and all of that kind of stuff, they get this stuff ready, you know, years and years in advance. So by the time you're searching it, they probably have already hired people. Out. Like now I'm booked for something, you know, eight months out into next year. So a lot of times you be, will be searching for something on down the line and then you may have better chances with that. So if you're searching for something as early as January, chances are they probably already have you know, if it's a big major event, they already have it planned. So you want to be looking further down the year. But I would say one out of every 10 of these or so that you reach out to can be a hit and will be a hit. Um, and again, they're major, they're major players in the game. I've done a lot of gotten a lot of gigs for this. So this is one of the ways that you can get um, corporate gigs. So I hope that answers your question, John. All right, I move these through these a little more quickly, let me see somebody we have. Okay, guys, only two, wait, refresh. Yep, only two spots left, guys. So if you want to get in on that, you need to get in on it right away. All right, so let's go to another question. Um, so I hope I'm saying this name right. M-O-H-A-U, Mohau, I guess that's how you say your name. Sorry if I'm butchering it. How do you build your own brand? Oh, that's a great question. So how you build your own brand again, it starts by just doing the things that we talked about here. You want to start positioning yourself in what you offer as value to someone else. So again, if you're, you don't want to be just, let's say you play rock music and you're a rock band. Well, that's cool and all, but there's a thousand rock bands out there. So what do you do to separate yourself from others? The way that you do that, the way that you separate yourself from others and position yourself excuse me, is you talk about you build what you do based on the value that you provide. So maybe you are a rock band that, again, focuses on high energy dance music to keep the crowd going. Maybe your, um, what do you call it? Your target audience is people over a certain age or under a certain age. You want to get specific about those things so that you are able to you know, have a positioning in this area where you can build around what you're trying to do. And that's what builds your brand. When you're able to separate yourself out from other brands and other people doing the same thing that you're doing, that's how you start to build your brand. So I hope that answers your question. All right. Next question comes from, we only got a few more of these guys. Let's see. From Vane, who says, who or whom should I not use or work with or for? 
I'm tired of games being played. I will outsource my skills, but I'm not interested in working with person group company that is just doing a money grab. They know people will pay to just have a chance, but enough of chances. There needs to be a better way to reach people that actually need music material, just not adding to a catalog. So I'm not quite sure I understand everything you're asking, Van. I'll try to work through it a little bit. Um, who to work with and who to work for. And you're talking about outsourcing your skills, but you're not interested in working for people who are doing a money grab. So I'm not, I would have to kind of know vain, I guess what your particular situation is like, if, are you talking about like you have a band and you have services that you're trying to provide as a band or as a group or something like that? Is that what you mean? If so, and you're talking about working with other, it's, it's one of those things that's kind of a trial and error thing, man. You, you just kind of have to have some, um, I guess, some judgment about what people are asking for. It's really easy to get taken advantage of in pretty much any industry. So you want to have some uh, some fail safes there in place. Usually if people are offering you something that's too good to be true. I mean, it's probably the case. If somebody's coming along offering you, you know, the world, hey, give you gigs and all of this kind of stuff, as long as you give me, you know, a couple thousand dollars. In most cases, it it turns out not to be true, right? So, um, yeah, you just want to be careful about those things. So, about who to work with and who to work for, it's a bit of a trial and error process. Uh, but don't be afraid to go through it, man. But just have those fail safes in place to where you kind of use your own judgment to know who and what type of people to get involved with and not to get involved with. Um, you said there needs to be a better way to reach people that actually need music material just not adding to a catalog. So I'm guessing you're talking about just providing some sort of uh, maybe original music or something to people like on the sites and stuff like that. Yeah. Most of the time that stuff, the the good stuff from that usually comes from like word of mouth, man. Like, you know, you got to get out and get to get to know people like that's sort of a lost art nowadays. I tell people all the time, like that's why I talked about collaboration earlier. You know, you want to find people who need music, man, go to the places where they, perform you know go to open mics <clears throat> and stuff like that in your local area if you have them or places where you know musicians and artists and bands are performing talk to them hey man hey do you guys need you know music for this i provide this i provide that and what you're doing there even if they say hey no we don't need anything what they're what you're doing right there is making a connection making a collaboration you're saying at that point what well, you know here's my number if you need anything or if you know anybody that needs anything hand them my number there is your sort of workaround for that. Um, a lot of people want to, again, I know that's a, that's sort of the, the hard way to do things nowadays. Again, I came up in the time where that was just the way we did it, but you know, people want that easy way out. Now people will more likely want to do stuff like join sites who promise who to give them that type of stuff. It really doesn't work that well. You still kind of have to go through that process. So I hope that answers your question vein. All right. Uh, a couple more guys. So let me see. Alan is asking, get, he says, I'm guessing you're saying how to get our music out to the public and music heard worldwide. Okay. All right. That's a good question. So <clears throat> here's what I would say to that. I kind of spoke to it earlier about when I talked about audiences. I'm sorry, guys, my throat is getting a little dry. Let me get a little sip of water here. So when I talked about audiences being much more tribal, right. And them sort of liking particular artists. I think that's what you should shoot for rather than this, this whole worldwide thing. It's such a big playground. Now, this is what one of the examples I give all the time is what's happening with a lot of us musicians. Um, hold on. I'm sorry. That's my, okay. So one, one left guys, <laughs> one left. All right. One left for that, um, for that bonus. Okay. So one of the things I say all the time, one of the analogies that I give is that you imagine this big stadium football field and you got, you know, this stadium full of people and everybody's on the field saying, Hey, look at me. Hey, check out my music. Hey, look at what I can do. Hey, buy my music, buy my products, all of this kind of stuff. You have all of these people that's doing that. Right. Right. And so the question becomes, 
how do I separate myself out from those people to get attention? Well, the thing is not to try to go for everybody's in their attention. What you want to do is sort of develop a niche around what you do. You want to, you know, get two or three people here, three or four people there, four or five people here and there to build around what you do. And the more you build that around what you do, the more they will become sort of evangelists for your work. This is what I just showed you guys my Instagram. This is kind of what happened to me. More, The more my stuff got shared, the more it got shared, right? Because people were getting onto it. So I would say, you know, again, trying to get your music out to the world, so to speak, don't go for the world. You know, focus on, you know, that that first thousand, that first 1,500, the first three or 4,000, right? Get them, nourish that tribe, you know, provide them value and they will they will become evangelists for what you do. They will bring in the masses for you. So I hope that answers your question, really. Uh, Victoria is also asking, how do you find corporate gigs? I think I answered that already. Let me see. Is that the one I answered from the chat? I got a couple more coming in, in the chat. So give me, a, I see you guys' questions in the chat. Give me one second, guys. Let me get through these other ones. Um, yeah, I did answer the question about how to find more corporate gigs. So I think that was Victoria. I think, was that you asked that question earlier? I think so. If not, just scroll back a little bit in the video. You'll see the resource I gave for that. So that will answer that questions. Uh, Manuel D is asking what questions to ask. Um, I'm sorry, man. I just, I don't know what context you mean. Um, uh, what questions to ask regarding what you just say, what questions to ask. So if you hear, let me know, give me a little bit more context on that in, in the chat. Maybe I can answer. Um, again, Steve is asking, how can I get return on my investment? I'm spending 300 a month on wedding wire and it's not working. What strategies actually work? Wedding wire. Is that one of the sites that are like the, one of the things I was, I'm not familiar with a lot of these, these sites. Is that the one that's promises to get you wedding gigs and stuff like that? And 300 a month. That's pretty steep guys. I, okay. Let me tell you guys something. I think a lot of these pay to play sites, some of them have value. So I, I don't, I'm not going to trash them or anything like this. Some of them have value and some of them can, um, get you some gigs and stuff here and there. But I'll, I'll tell you by and large, man, this is one of the things about this. This is one of the things that has not changed the way that people get in on gigs, major gigs, wedding gigs, any kind of stuff like talk show gigs, uh, awards show gigs and stuff like that is not through these websites. It's not, it's the same way that it's always been. It's a, a process of who, you know, if, you know, the roots on, what is it on? They're on Jimmy Fallon, right? The roots band on Jimmy Fallon. They, their keyboard player or something like that is quitting and they need to hire somebody else. They're not going to reach out to a website and go through a, a wedding wire website. They probably not going to do that. These people already have connections. They already know people. All they have to do is pick up the phone and call, hey, one of their friends, hey, do you know a keyboard player? Um, that I can put in such and such as place. And that's the same thing that happens with um, any other type of gigs. It's just like if you, you got a band now, again, you need somebody for, you know, to fill in for, you're not going to go through a website to find it, or that's at least not going to be your first thing to go to. It may be a last result, but you're going to pick up the phone. You're going to call your friends that you already know to say, Hey, uh, you know, a keyboard player, you know, a drummer, you know, a bass player, you know, this that I can get from my gig. Right. They're going to recommend somebody and you're going to reach out to them. That's the same way that it happens in this, you know, in the larger industry, the wedding industry and all of that kind of stuff. So I would say to anybody, be really careful about, you know, these things. I Again, I don't have much experience with them, so I'm not going to completely trash them or anything like that. I just know a few people who have tried them are basically saying the same thing that you're talking about, that, you know, you you pay them these fees and you know, they'll get you a gig or something here and there, but it's like the amount that you pay versus what you get from them doesn't match. So that's what I pretty much hear. I've not heard a single person say that, oh man, I've joined this website and oh my God, I got all of these gigs and now I'm famous and all. <laughs> it just, it just doesn't happen like that. So anyway, Steve, I hope that answers your question. All right. 
Uh, this comes from uh, Rohini. I guess that's how you say your name. How to convince the organizers if you are a, in a new genre of music performance for them. Example, proposing an Indian music in a venue that are not used to it. Oh, that's a good question. So basically pitching what you do, pitching your um, your idea or what you do um, to like venues and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And if you have something that's like kind of a little different than the norm, like just normal rock music, R&B, jazz and stuff like that, right? That's a good question. I kind of answered it already. Actually, the, the thing about what you want to do always what did I say that the two things of this entire presentation or the, the one main thing that undergirds this entire presentation value, giving value. You want to focus on um, making what you do. Pitch to them how what you do, what you're offering is going to be of value and of service to them. How is it going to solve an issue for them? How is it going to solve a problem? So maybe you're saying Indian music. So maybe you notice that that's something like that has a particular type of crowd that, you know, you could get into the club. So or into the venue, whatever there is, bar or club or whatever. So you can picture them and say, hey, I know this. A lot of people in the Indian community, they love this type of music and they they've been looking for somewhere to go. So if you hire me and my band and the type of music that I do or my performances, I'm, I can probably help get some of these people in there. And again, that's solving a problem for them because what does all venue clubs and bars want? They want people in there. They want people patronizing, buying drinks and all of that kind of stuff, right? So if that's a, a solution that you can provide to a problem that they have, they will be more likely to hire you. So again, it's not, this, this is what I mean about what we always have to kind of start thinking about, thinking of ourselves as business people. It's not just this thing where we, we're artists and we play music and we just want to show up and people hire us. We, we can't do that anymore. It's what are we providing a value of substance to the people who we want to hire us? Again, it's the same thing I explained to you about the wedding industry stuff and why I say, hey, when I'm pitching my services to a bride, a couple or whatever, that's the stuff I'm pitching. Hey, I know you guys have probably heard stereotypes about bands and all this kind of stuff being unprofessional, but this is what we provide. We're going to show up on time. We're going to provide high energy music. We're going to sit down with you beforehand, go through the set list, see if there's anything that, you know, you may not want played for whatever particular reasons that you have so that we ensure that you have like the best night of your life. That's what I'm pitching to them. I'm not pitching. Hey, we're just a party band. <laughs> that's, that's cool because it doesn't separate you from anybody else. So you can't focus on like the, you know, hey, we do this different type of music. Focus on what solutions that you're going to provide for them. So, again, Rohini, I hope that answers your question. It's a really good question. I think a lot of us need to uh, kind of understand that that's the way that things kind of work now. All right. So. I see a couple of questions here in the chat. Let me go back up. Um, wow. Um, let's see. So J Love Jams is asking, how do I do covers and original music with YouTube, but still make money? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's a really good question. So um, covers, of course, you so there's with cover songs. Of course, you kind of have have to have licensing to do it. Um, one of the ways that you could do it is get the mechanical license for your the, whatever the cover songs that you provide. That's probably going to be the easiest way. But that's also going to cost you a little bit of money up front, which you may not want to do. But it, again, it's going to be the easiest way. Go through a company like, um, again, excuse me, um, Harry Fox. If you guys don't know what Harry Fox is, harryfox.com. H-A-R-R-Y Fox. That's the company that provides uh, mechanical licenses for music and stuff like that. So you want to get a get a uh, membership set up with them. It's free. You get it set up. Of course, you have to pay for whatever the song is that you want to get licensing to. But you can do that way. That way you got the licensing to do the cover songs on YouTube. So you could do it that way. Now, the second way that you could do cover songs. You can do cover songs on YouTube. You're just going to get a content strike. And what the content strike basically means is that you can't profit off. They're not going to allow you to profit off someone else's stuff. So you basically doing somebody else's music, 
So legally, you can't profit off there. But what you can, can do, and this is what I'm seeing a lot of musicians do on YouTube, they're getting popular by doing that, right? They get popular by putting out those cover songs, performing those cover songs. Like this guy I told you I follow, he does cover songs, got over a million followers. And then he get those followers in and, you know, he's not making money off the those particular songs he's doing, but then he releases his original music. He starts performing, cover, uh, you know, his original music on there and do videos of his stuff, which people also do. And he gets his... Um, money made that way. So he gets paid through YouTube. You can sell CDs and all of that kind of stuff. See, this is something I'm going to talk about in the YouTube. Um, the bonus I mentioned, the YouTube masterclass about this kind of stuff and about how you can use it. It's not just a, people kind of think of it as a one dimensional thing. Like, Hey, I'm going to perform music and I'm going to get paid for it. That's really not how it works. It's like YouTube is such a big deal. This is why I advise people to get on it. It's you make money a bunch of ways through uh, through AdSense. So the ads that play on your video, like the ads you have to watch when you people like YouTubers get paid for that stuff because they're playing ads on their original content. That's one way you can release courses. You could release music, your own music and stuff like that. You could release merch and all of that kind of stuff. Those are different ways to make money. So it's not just you could use the cover song thing as a conduit to get all of this other stuff started. Right. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Um, J love. Um, yeah. You're saying I want to not be demonetized. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily going to demonetize you. It, it depends. Um, it's basically going to demonetize those videos again. So the, the songs that you're doing as covers, your cover songs will be demonetized or not be able to be monetized. So it's not really being demonetized. It's just like you're not going to be able to monetize them because you're doing cover songs, but you can still do them. Artists and stuff are doing it all the time. But again, if that's something you worry about, the easiest way to do it is just the legal way and to get the mechanical license to, um, you know, get that done. So that would be the easiest way to do it. Um, let me see. Cole, you said, you, oh, it's in the course you just said. I think what you're doing is valuable. So thank you. Thank you so much, Cole. Uh, thank you so much for saying that. Um, J Love, again, you're asking what AI are you using? I can't see it. You didn't see the, the chat GPT? That's the one I was using. Um, you probably saw you just didn't see the name. I'm guessing that's what you're saying. It's called chat GPT. Chat, C-H-A-T, chat GPT. That's the one that I was using for that. Just just start using guys. I'm telling you, this is one of these things like like now it's so early in the process. All you got to do is just like start using it and you'll get knowledgeable enough about it over the next, I don't know, few months or so that it will be like the thing where you can once everybody once the masses get a hold of it, like you will already know how to use it. And you can you know, you charge. This is what this is how entrepreneurship works. You charge people to teach them how to use it more effectively. That I mean, that's just one one way that you can use it. So there's many ways that you can branch out and do that. All right. All right. Let me see where we are. I'm sure. But let me check this <laughs> spot again. Yeah, guys. Okay. So that last refresh. Yeah. That last bonus is gone, guys. Sorry about that. So the last of that 25 is gone. And I tell you what, what time is it? Um. Okay. I tell you what. Let me make sure. Hold on. Let me see something before I tell you this. Okay, so. Yeah, I tell you what. Um, I will. I will do five more. Oh, push myself and do five more. If you guys if five more of you guys want to join now, I'll do. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure I can I can actually do that. So I'll do five more um, of that bonus of the free consultation if you guys want to get in on that now. Let me show you guys a little bit too about musicians in a circle. I wanted to show you this so you guys could see an example of what you get when you join, like the some of the courses that we have in there. So this these are this is inside the membership portal of musicians in a circle. Some of the guys or some of the people that are part of musicians in a circle, or I think or some of them are here and they may be able to share a little bit more with you if you have questions about it, about this. 
but check it out. These are some of the courses that we have in there. Um, so this is the marketing for musicians course that I told you, you will get free access to. Uh, this is one of the uh, premier courses of it, but you will get that for free. Uh, the musician success framework, contemporary music theory. You want to learn a little bit about music theory. That's something that we have a course on that. The gig conversation. This is about how to communicate with bars and clubs and restaurant owners and all of that social media masterclass. Uh, the musicians got to getting influence on social media and all of that. How to start your business from scratch. You got a course on that. Conquering your online content. So again, gaining influence and making money and dominating social media through your content creation. Got a course on money mastery, right? What it takes to earn money from people. Your avatar. You've heard a lot about, uh, you know, you're having a customer avatar and target audience and all of that kind of stuff. That's what this course focuses on. This is the YouTube quick start course in the course form that we have it on the site. A lot of you guys have access to that for free already. Um, about your niche. You've heard about narrowing your niche and how to niche down and all of that kind of stuff. This is what this course is about. Painless productivity, how to be more productive as you know musicians and how to best meet your customers' needs. Creating digital products. Like we got a lot of courses on <laughs> everything here, guys. Creating digital online products. So like if you got a you want to teach lessons online and you got a, a course you want to put together, a master class on, uh, you know, how to play the guitar or how to play a song. This course will teach you how to put that together in a effective way that it's it's providing value to the people you're serving. Uh, releasing music. This is a guide to, you know, how to release your music. Uh, the musician success plan. Guys, we got a lot of courses in here. And again, this is growing every month. So we do a new training, a new course every month. So again, that's just that alone, guys. I'm telling you, like these courses in and of themselves sell I'm kind of hesitant to tell you the price. So I'll tell you, like some of them go for like one ninety seven, some of them are like two ninety seven, stuff like that. I have a couple of high dollar courses in there, but you see the value of this just alone, even just like one or two or three of these courses, like is you know, is triple the cost of your monthly charge if you join musicians in a circle so there's some of the things that you get in it so just in case you guys have questions about that and you wanted to see it all right so let me check the chat here guys my voice is getting i have a studio session crazy in about 30 minutes <laughs> that i'm doing thank god i don't have to sing or anything but so my voice is getting ready to go but anyway if you guys don't have any more questions let me just double check uh what you guys are saying here in the chat so, um, uh, J Love, again, you're saying thank you for all your videos. Hey, guys, thank you so much. Thank you, J Love, for saying it, but thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you guys again so much for. Let me just say this to everybody that's here. I know you guys check out the videos and stuff that I do. It's really, um, it's really an honor and a privilege to be able to like do this and to be able to serve you. One of the reasons I started the Music Space YouTube channel is exactly for the reasons that I'm preaching about in this course to be able to provide this value. You know, I saw this whole, like it was again, for me, my experience was, was that when I was, you know, learning and growing and stuff, I didn't have anybody to take the reins from me and teach me this stuff. I had a couple, again, a couple of mentors and stuff. Um, but again, just by and large, I didn't have anybody to just take me under their wing. And now, especially in this, sort of new information age that we're in where there's a lot of information out there and people are confused about what to do, how to do it, where to go to get information, all that kind of stuff. I wanted to provide a hub that was, um, that was valuable that, you know, musicians and artists could get value out of and just come to it. You don't have to worry about, and I wanted to be there consistent and show up so that you knew, um, that I wasn't just, you know, some random dude that's just showing up on YouTube. I wanted to do it enough so you could see the authenticity and know that I'm coming from an authentic place. At least that's what I hope everybody gets from it. So <clears throat> again, thank you so much for, um, for watching the videos. We're going to continue doing it guys. This YouTube was a, a, a pretty decent year of growth for the channel. I think we we've grown about, Oh, I forget what the numbers are. I only check what the difference in the numbers is every new year's eve so like new year's eve this coming weekend i'll check that night so going into probably after the gig i have on new year's eve but or during the gig i'll check what the numbers are and then compare them to last new year's eve but i think we've grown about 
I want to say about 5,000 or so subscribers this year alone. Again, and I know that's not a huge amount for a lot of people, but again, for me, that's that's one. It's for me. I'm just honored to have hell if 10 of you guys showed up to listen to what I got to say. It's in a, I'm providing value to you. That's great for me. So, again, it's never about the number. And then plus, of course, is and this is something that I'm going to talk about in that YouTube masterclass. Like. This is. It's, it's not about the subscriber numbers anymore. It used to, if we'd have been talking about this seven, six, five, six, seven years ago, you'd probably had to have a certain number of, of subscribers, but it's no longer about that. You got, you hit a baseline of like a thousand subscribers. You could start making some serious, serious money on YouTube. But anyway, we'll get into that later. But anyway, I just, again, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you guys for continuing to watch the videos. Thank you guys for a wonderful year that we've had here on the channel and that you've been here, you know, just watching the videos and, and giving me reason you got, I see all of your comments. I may not respond to them all, but most of the time I read probably 99% of the comments that come through. Um, so I see them all and you guys say such amazing things about, you know, how the video help videos help you and stuff like that. So that it always warms my heart when I see that. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, yeah, and Durrell is saying uh, crazy how fast 2022 came and went. Grateful for your content. Again, thanks so much, man. Thank you so much for, for being here. Um, uh, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything else in the chat. Um, make sure I'm not missing any more questions. Thank you. Behind the scenes again is saying uh, thank you for doing this. Hey, again, guys, just thank you so much for being here. Um singing like I said I'm trying to book but the link is not working are you talking about the um the musicians in a circle link singing like let me know if that's what you're talking about I can make sure that that is anybody else having trouble with that link if that's what you're talking about please let me know um I'll put it there one more time if that's what you mean uh, I'm hoping that it's okay let me throw it in the chat one more time There is the link. Um, are you, do you mean that you're on the page or something like that? So uh, singing luck, if you see this message, let me know what it is that you mean and I'll, I'll try to help you out with that. But anyway, so again, the guys, thank you so much for being here. Let me just, I'm double checking that I, I want to make sure I get everybody's questions in. Again, this is our kind of last, I want to, and let me tell you so a, a little bit about what we're planning in. 2023 single log you're saying thanks yes i guess that's what you mean okay um 2023 again i'm i'm kind of going to double down guys on content I'm, I'm i want to one of the things and i tell you guys let you guys on some of the, you know on some of the things that i'm planning here for the channel i have a a lot of people that's been asking me about um bringing some more people like bringing some of my friends in the industry and stuff on the channel so I thought about what I would do is maybe do a podcast version of this channel too, where we do like a podcast every month and I do an interview with like some of my friends and stuff in the industry. I know, I mean, I'm not, I'm never going to, you know, claim to be famous or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's whatever, but you know, I know a few people that, you know, are in the industry and that can probably get in and, and give you guys some valuable information. And, you know, even just some of my close friends and stuff that are musicians, uh, get them in and, um, you know, provide you guys some information. So that's one of the things that I'm, I'm going to probably try out, see how it works. See if you guys like it. Um, again, I'm probably going to be doing more of these live streams as well. I thought about, I'm still thinking about, I know a lot of you guys, I sent out a, a survey about what you guys thought about doing me doing channel memberships where we would do something like this, like this training, uh, something like this, you know, once or so a month, you know, maybe once or twice a month. And there would be a channel membership for that. So I'm still thinking about that. Again, me doing stuff is always just trying to find out the best way to provide value for you. Like, I don't want to just do nothing to be doing it. I want to, if I want to be, I want it to be something that I know that I can do consistently and that I can maintain and that I could create a certain level of value for you that is going to be worth your time when you see it. So again, that's just a couple of things that we're talking about 
we're doing on the channel in 2023. Look forward to some more great content. As stuff is changing in the music industry and happening, I'm of course I can keep my ears to the ground. So we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be dealing with it. So again, that's some of the things that we're talking about. So all right, if you guys don't have any more questions, thank you again so much, so much for being here. I appreciate your time. Thank you again for a wonderful 2022. Thank you for, you know, really just everything. Just again, for watching the videos, my heart is warmed by that. Every time I, I think about it, every time I read some of the comments and even these comments you guys are saying here now, um, you know, is, is really, is, is just really move. It's moving. I'll say that. So again, thank you guys for being here. I'm going to cut it now. Cause again, my voice is getting ready to go. I got a studio session in about 30, five minutes now so i'm going to rest up for a second get ready for this session and then um you know make some stuff happen so you guys have a wonderful new year and stay safe please stay safe guys new year's eve is always one of those nights that's again you always hear with us musicians you always hear something crazy or bad happening you guys stay safe if you're playing if you're gigging if you're going out whatever just stay safe guys you know do stuff responsibly and all of that kind of stuff so again, thank you so much again for being here. Jay love seeing you again. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys. I will see you guys in the next pre presentation. I will be releasing another video on this channel this week, probably tomorrow. So stay tuned for that as well. And I will see you guys then have a great rest of 2022. Great rest of this week. See you guys in 